finish the topic of volume studies okay and uh, i already uh, sent the dates for the quiz but we will discuss it after class as well okay i will have a final say now we are starting the new topic which will be the last step of your term project as well the last step of the term project is calculation of level of service so this is what this topic is about it is taken from two chapters of the textbook chapter 7 deals with basic concepts and chapter 28 deals with the calculations but they were from the same topic so i merged them together in these slides the next slides will also be from the same topic but from a different uh, book okay uh, in this course we will only calculate level of service for uninterrupted flow facilities okay we will only calculate level of service for uninterrupted flow facilities uninterrupted means no interruption right what are interruptions on the interruption of flow interruption now nah, i am saying you are in the <laughs> yes the word sorry What is an interruption? Interruption means what? An intersection. Interruption means an intersection. This road has intersection, right? That's why we call it interrupt. Okay. So uninterrupted means no intersections. Okay. Then uh, there can be different types of uninterrupted flow uh, roads. Okay, uninterrupted flow facilities. One of them is called a freeway. So freeway is that one which we already know, no interruptions. Freeway is no interrupt. We already know that. Okay. Then we have two other types which have interruptions. Okay. But the distance between the interruption is so long that in that distance we can consider it uninterrupted. Okay. So we have multi-lane highways and rural two-lane highways. in both these cases we have interruption there are intersections on these highways but the distance between the intersections is very long how long look at the top how long more than 2 months okay so on multi highways and freeways there are intersections but the distance between them is more than 2 miles so in that distance we consider it an interruption okay so multi highways and rural two lane highways are mixed they are mixed okay but a major part of it is an interruption Okay, the part between the inter interruptions, and that part should be at least more than two months. Clear? Clear? Okay. Uh, yeah. Now you can see the difference between these two. I am calling it multi-lane, and I am calling this as two-lane. Okay. So if we have a highway without interruptions, we call it freeway. If you have a highway which has interruptions. But the distance is more than two miles between them. You can call it multi-lane or you can call it two-lane, depending upon what. Depending upon what. What is the difference between multi-lane and two-lane? Number of number of lanes. Okay. The difference between them is what? Number of lanes. Okay. So if you have a highway with interruptions. More than two miles, it has two lanes. You will call it two lane. If it has more than two lanes, you will call it multi lane. Clear? Clear? Okay. Now, uh, what about freeways? Two lanes or multi? Freeways are two lanes or multi lanes? Take a guess. No. They are only. A highway without interruptions. Should it be two lane or multi lane? Multi. Big highway, right? main highway. Okay. So people are always multi. Okay. Yeah. Now you see here freeway. Did they say rural and urban freeway? No. Multi lane highway. Rural and urban? No. Two lane highway. What? Rural only. Okay, so two-lane highways, uninterrupted two-lane highways, will only be in urban and rural areas. 
in rural villages outside the cities why outside the city traffic is low because the population is low there are not many people okay so two lane highway is enough for low traffic and there are no people living around it so you don't need intersection right why would any kind intersection nobody is enter right okay but you cannot do the same thing in a two lane highway in an urban area because urban area has lot of population you have you have two lane highways in manama and mohara you cannot make them on in drug okay we need people to enter the highway right and they need intersection so that's why rural two lane highways the equations the procedures the standards the definitions which you will see in this topic are coming from highway capacity manual so highway capacity manual is a global standard not only us or middle east or something it's a global standard this is their they develop services they did okay they came up with the idea okay let's make that our life miserable you will come up with the other okay so uh, highway capacity manual is a global standard for capacity and level of service analysis whoever is doing this they are following this manual okay the manual is published by trd transportation research board and this board works under national academy of uh, engineering us national means us right? not bad so trd is a very big organization they have a uh, conference every year very big conference they have uh, research journals and they have funding and projects and so on they do lot of things okay they started publishing this manual in 1950 and in 2022 they published the latest version okay i am still waiting for it to get old so i can get a copy for free okay but if you search and you find it and you give it to me they are no bonus marks okay right you guys are good good with it right then find things even the the previous one was given by some school okay try uh in 1994 maybe there were some uob students who went there and complained that your manual has lot of equation we cannot do it manually what are you doing you are getting c and d because of you so they said okay we will collaborate with the university and we will come up with a software So they developed a software to do the calculations of the manual. Okay, this is what you do when you have a problem. Don't come crying. Solve the problem. Okay, don't you don't want to do it manually? Make your own software. Okay, so they did it. Anyways, they did it for a couple of uh, times. Okay, they developed the software in 1994. Then they updated the software a couple of times. But then now they are free from this because. You take any traffic software, they are using the calculation of the map. Okay. I don't need a specific software from them. I can take any software in the world, and I can do the calculation which are given in the map. Any software in the world is calculating capacity or level of service. They are using the map. Okay. The most common is Bayesian. They use it in Bahrain, Pakistan. It's a German software that they use in Europe as well. Okay, so I don't know how they convince the Germans to use the US standard, but they do. Thank you. So uh, this is again like uh, the most commonly used software in many different uh, countries of the world, and this software is also following the same manual. Okay, but there you can see the other names as well. All of them are using the calculation from the manual. So you don't need a software now. from them okay so they don't update the software they just update the manual and the software's update according to their manual okay capacity we know capacity right what is capacity capacity means what maximum demand what is it maximum what okay maximum number of vehicles which will pass right okay a small difference here i you see this is the uh, standard definition from the manual 
So first difference you see, they are saying maximum hourly rate, not volume. Hourly rate. Okay, hourly rate means maximum rate of flow. Maximum rate of flow. Okay, hourly rate means maximum rate of or rate of flow. Okay. So uh, the difference between volume and rate of flow is rate of flow is taken from less than one hour converted to hours, right? Rate of flow is you take what flow for 15 minutes and you convert it to one hour. Okay. So when you say capacity is maximum hourly rate of flow, that means this value is valid for even a small portion of the time in the hour as well. Earlier we did some examples in which we saw even if you take the full capacity of the road, but it can fail in a 15 minutes period. It can happen. But when you take capacity as maximum rate of flow, then even within the hour it will not fail. Okay? If you have maximum number of vehicles, even for a 15, 10 minutes period, it will still work. Okay? So that's why we take rate of flow, not volume. If you take volume, then yeah, total is fine. But maybe within the hour I may have a small traffic jam. In the hour, I may have a small traffic jam. When you take maximum hourly rate, problem solved. Okay? The capacity is maximum rate of flow, not maximum volume. Okay. Second, it can be persons or vehicles. Capacity can be persons per hour or vehicles per hour, depending upon your facility. So for roads, it's vehicles per hour. For buses or a bus system, it is persons per hour. Got it? For buses, we don't uh, count how many buses. Because we are controlling the buses, right? How many buses you will run, you will decide. Okay? So then it's number of persons. It's a reasonable expectation. It's not a fixed number. In real life, the value which you are assuming at capacity may happen, may not happen. Okay? It may happen, it may not happen. Depending upon the road condition, the environment, the driver behavior and so on. Okay? So, for example, you say three, uh, the road capacity is 2,000 meters per hour. But, practically, I was assuming 4% trucks. In 2000, I was assuming 4% trucks. Actually, now I have 6% trucks. So, I may not achieve the capacity of 2000 because of the number of trucks. Got it? Okay. So the, value of capacity which is which you are calculating using an equation or something the actual output of the road can be less or more okay so the value which you are calculating is a reasonable value it's a reasonable value okay it can be uh, now capacity or volume or flow or rate of flow or demand all these things are usually for a point when you count cars you count at a point, right? How many cars are passing the point? Okay, you are counting at a point. Okay. So capacity by default is for a point. By default capacity is for a point. But if the characteristics of the road, the design of the road doesn't change from this point to the entire section, the capacity is also same. Okay. So I'm giving you capacity of this point. This point has two lanes and x gradient and y radius and so on. Okay? These things are fixed from this point to the next two miles. So for the next two miles capacity is same. Clear? Okay? Yeah. So what are the things which affect capacity? They have mentioned four things in the last line. Four things in the last line. I will give you an example for each one of them. Prevailing roadway, the design of the roadway affects capacity. Very easy, right? Very obvious. One road has two lanes. Another one has three lanes. Which one will have more capacity? Three lanes, right? Why? Because of the road design, right? Okay? Environmental conditions. Okay? We have heavy rain and we have clear weather. Which one will have more, more capacity? Heavy rain or clear weather? The flow, the flow, okay. 
Let's go. Which one have more flow? Heavy rain or fair weather? Fair weather, right? This change because of what? The weather, the environment that means. Okay? You have fog, you have sandstorm. This will affect the capacity of the road. The same road in a clear weather will handle more flow as compared to the same road in heavy rain. Got it? Okay? Traffic conditions, I already gave the example of number of trucks. Okay? You have same number of vehicles, 10 trucks. Same number of vehicles, 50 trucks. So the flow will be slower here, right? The best business. Got it? And then we have control conditions. Again, I will give you a very obvious example. If I ask you, any one of you which intersection has a problem, you will say so and so. And I ask you for a solution, you will say what? Move, remove the signal. This intersection has a lot of traffic jam. Remove the signal, build a bridge, right? Signal is what? Signal is a control, right? See, you are controlling traffic, right? Through a signal. So when you say move the signal, remove the signal, you are changing what? Control condition. Okay, which one will have more capacity? Which signal without signal? Which signal without signal? More capacity? Without, right? Okay, so change in control condition. So, we have idea about each one of them. Now, I said we will discuss uninterrupted flow facilities and I already defined three types of them. So, you can see all three of them mentioned here and their capacity is mentioned under ideal condition. These values which you see in the table are capacity of these facilities under ideal conditions. Okay? So for freeways and muddy and highways, you can see the value depends upon free flow speed. Free flow speed means what? Free flow speed means the design of the road. Free flow speed is a indicator. Free flow speed is linked with the design of the road. Better design, free flow speed is higher. Okay? So Free flow speed is giving uh, the idea about the design of the road. So based upon the design of the road, these are the capacities for freeways and marine highways under ideal conditions. Correct? For two lane highways, it is fixed. You see, no free flow speed for two lane highways. How much is the capacity? 3000 to 1. Okay? Now two lane means what? How many lanes in each direction? One lane in each direction. Okay, keep it in mind. I'll keep on saying this term in the entire chapter. Two lane, four lane. So whenever I say four lane, two lane is that. Okay. So two lane means one lane in each direction. Okay. So total of both directions, capacity 3200. One direction how much? Okay. Two directions have 3200 and one direction has Huh? 1,600, right? Half, right? Half. What is this? It's a mistake, right? It's a mistake, huh? No? Half of 6,200 is not 1,600? It is or not? It is? This is wrong, right? No? Yes. So why is this? It's not wrong. You say you are saying it's not. Is it wrong or not? Huh? Is it wrong or not? So, it's wrong, right? You are saying no. And you have to tell me why. It's not clear. Is it wrong or not? Of course it's wrong. See? Are you telling me why? Yes. It's not half. It's not half. See? See the confidence. Yeah, it works differently. Why differently? I'll give you a life lesson now. Uh, when, so two directions, okay, one direction reaches 1,700. 1, uh, one direction will reach how much? 1,700. When this happens, it will start affecting the other side as well. So the other side cannot reach the same value because of the effect of this edge. Two lane highways, 
one direction affects the other they are not independent okay they are not working independently so when one goes up it is affecting the other one as well so the other one cannot get to the same level okay so the one which is going to 1700 it is not letting the other one go to the same level okay this is what happens in real life people go to the top they will not let you go to the same level okay They have to pull their legs. Remember, got it, got it. Hmm. Okay. So, one thousand seven hundred, and the other one reaches how much then? If one side is one thousand seven hundred, total is three thousand two hundred. Other side reaches one thousand five hundred. So, this less capacity, lower capacity, is the effect of the first direction. Got it? Okay. One direction reaches one thousand seven hundred. Because of the effect of this, the the other one can only reach one thousand. Clear? Okay. If both of them are independent, then yes, one thousand seven hundred here, one thousand seven hundred. But they are conflicting with each other. Okay. Now look at the units. Look at the units. What are the units? What are the units? Pedestrian car. Huh? Pedestrian. A person is inside the car. Don't call him a pedestrian. Okay. Passenger car. Person inside the car is a passenger. Okay. I thought I didn't have to give this example in this class, but you know what happened? I came here first time. I was using the old edition of the book. The old edition, they were saying signals, traffic signals. You guys, you guys don't call it traffic signal, yeah? right? You call it what? Traffic? Traffic lights, right? Mm -hmm. Call traffic lights or lights, whatever. Okay. They published a new edition of the book. So I was telling everybody, don't say lights. Say signals. They published a new edition of the book. You know what they did? Yes. Ah? Huh? They changed the signals to lights. Okay. So maybe in the new edition they will say pedestrian car. Ah? Huh? Okay. Can happen. They are against me. Whatever I correct, then they will get rid of it. Okay. So passenger cars is what is why they are calling it ideal conditions. This is capacity under ideal condition. Ideal condition means what? All of them are passenger cars. It's ideal, right? Doesn't happen. All all vehicles cannot be passenger cars. Okay. And they cannot be pedestrian cars as well. Okay. Level of service. LOS means level of service. I have used this term earlier in the travel time topic as well. Up till now, we know two conditions of traffic: capacity and free flow. Right? Capacity means maximum flow rate. Huh? Capacity means maximum flow rate. And free flow means what? Free flow means what? Capacity is maximum flow rate. Free flow is? The speed is high, but what about the flow rate? In free flow conditions, the flow rate is how much? In free flow conditions, how much is the flow rate? You said speed is highest, right? So when do we have the speed highest speed? When the flow rate is very low, right? Should be very very low. So I don't see it. So I know two conditions now. I know one condition where flow rate is maximum. I know another condition where flow rate is minimum. Okay. Now let's say I'm designing the highway. Okay. Will I design to have free flow in the peak hour? Can I have free flow in the peak hour? Will it make sense? It doesn't make sense, right? Why we are calling the peak hour? Okay. And if you don't have zero, if you have zero flow rate even in the peak hour, that means your highway is useless. Who is using the highway? People are not even using it in the peak hour, right? 
Okay. Now, what about capacity? If I have capacity in the peak hour, the flow rate equal to capacity in the peak hour, is it good or bad? Flow rate equal to capacity in the peak hour, good or bad? Demand equals to capacity, good or bad? Huh? Bad, why? What do you think, good? Okay, what happens after capacity? If the demand goes more than capacity, then we have what? Break, new traffic jam, right? So when flow equals to capacity, you are where? You are at the boundary. A small increase in flow and you will have traffic jam, right? You won't take this risk. Okay. So what happens now? I have, I know free flow. Useless. I know capacity, very risky. Okay, so I need some other levels, right? I need for some other levels of traffic for design. Okay, and we know traffic changes. Traffic does not operate at free flow and capacity only. Traffic is something in between them as well. There are traffic levels which are more than free flow and less than capacity as well. And there are traffic levels which are more than capacity as well, right? All these things are possible. In a traffic stream, you can have free flow, you can have more than free flow, you can have capacity, you can have more than capacity, right? All these things are possible. So to define all these cases, we came up with a concept, not we, they. They came up with a concept of level of service. And when did they do it? They did it in 1965, after 15 years. The first manual was published in 1950. After 15 years, they thought, our life is too easy. Let us make it more miserable. We will come up with this one. Okay. Then, so levels of service are different, uh, different conditions of traffic. Levels of service are different conditions of traffic based upon its quality of operation. Levels of service define operational quality of traffic. Okay. What is the quality of traffic? Okay, and they can be free flow, more than free flow, capacity, more than capacity, and so on. Okay. And the fun thing is they define it with letters. Seems similar, right? These letters. You know them, right? <clears throat> right now this is your life. A to F, F to A, right? <clears throat> you are in the 400 level, obviously. Now you know everything about how to go from A to F and F to A, right? Hmm? Okay, official definition of level of service. The main thing I already mentioned that this is uh, uh, level of service defines the operational conditions, operating conditions for a road or lane under what? Under a wall. If this much is the volume on the highway, what is the level of service? Level of service is linked with volume. Okay, level of service links with volume. Level of service is quantitative. Okay, why quantitative? It's not number, right? Level of service is from what to what? A to S. So these are letters, right? Letters. You cannot measure letters. Okay. So these are, we call it qualitative. Level of service is a qualitative measure. Qualitative. Anything which you cannot measure is qualitative. Okay. So, level of service takes into account many things. For example, one thing I already mentioned is speed and travel time. The first time I used this term was in the topic of travel time. If speed is high, travel time is less. Less travel time, good or bad? Good, right? Less travel time is good. So level of service will be better. Quality will be better. It also depends upon freedom to maneuver. Freedom to maneuver means how easily I can change lanes, how easily I can find gaps. Okay? How free I am to accelerate and brake and take the turn and so on. More freedom, 
good or bad? Mofi dung on the road? Good. Only on the road. Mofi dung is not good anywhere. Okay? Especially if you do pinning there. Okay? Mofi dung on the road is good. Uh, traffic interactions. Interaction means intersection, right? More intersection, good or bad? Huh? More intersection, good or bad? Bad. Okay? So level of service is good now. Comfort and convenience. It depends upon the other things. Comfort and convenience, how, how you are feeling. Because of the speed, because of interruption, because of freedom, how you are feeling. This is your internal feeling. Okay? So if you have high speed, less interruption, you will feel more comfortable, right? You will be more convenient. Okay? Got it? Now you can see some of these things we cannot measure directly. Comfort, I cannot make. Freedom, I cannot make. Okay, convenience, you cannot make. Okay? But level of service can give us an idea about these things. Okay? Level of service is good, means the person is comforted. Okay? He may end up sleeping with Got it? Okay? So, level of service gives us an idea about uh, parameters which we cannot measure. Okay? This is a good thing about it. Okay, so level of service goes from A to F, right? We are missing one value, right? Missing one value. And that's so, okay, so we are missing. Uh, F means what? F means what?
the point after which the speed starts to drop. Correct? Okay, the practical capacity is the point of flow rate after which the speed starts to drop. Before that, people are moving at three speed. Okay? So it happens earlier in the rural uh, facilities and later in the uh, urban facilities, but it means the same thing. There's a point at which the speed starts to drop. Okay, so I told you the other service is from A to F, right? From A to F. So it's like your grades. Mm -hmm. so I have to give you A and B and C, right? Can I give anything to anybody? You, have, you, you guys think I can. When you come to me, you, this is in your mind. Doctor, give me B or C. Huh? I didn't write anything in the exam, but at least give me something. What is this? Anyways. So I love to give them, but I cannot, right? I have to take a value. That's why I have to take your exams and quizzes. I have to make you cry. I have to make you hate me and so on. Okay, all these things. Okay, so that I can get this value and then give you the grade, right? To give the grade, I need a number. I need a value. That value is called service mail. So you cannot just say this highway has double service A, this one has B, this one has C. Just from your opinion, no. You need a value. So the value which will give you level of service is called service measure. Okay? Service measure is the value which will give you level of service. Okay? So now look at the table. Which type of facilities we are doing? What type of facilities we are doing? There is three types, right? Which one we are doing? In this course, which one will we do? Uninterrupted. Okay? So uninterrupted are three types. Two lane highway, multi lane highways, and the freeways. We will not do all the freeways, we only do the first one. Okay? But you can see in these cases, the value which I need for level of service is what? Density. You want level of service for freeway? Calculate density. Level of service for multi lane highway? Calculate density. For two lane highways, I need these two things. We will discuss them later on in the topic. Okay? For two lane highways, I need these two values to calculate the level of service. Okay? For other road users, for example, people who are using buses, pedestrians, without cars, bicyclists, okay? For them, then we take the opinion. So we, we, we ask them, according to your opinion, this facility is level of service A, B, or C or something. Okay? Then we have interrupted flow. Interrupted means it has intersections. Intersections has delay. Intersection has delay. So to find out the level of service of intersections, I need delay. Okay? Then, so these are the values. First of all, see what type of facility you have. Then you come to this table and you see which value you need for the level of service. Got it? Okay. Again, going back to the example of the grid. So, Every grade has a range, right? Every grade has a range. Okay? If you cross the minimum value of the range, your grade changes, right? Okay? Same thing with the level of service. Every level of service has a range of flow rate. Every level of service has a range of flow rate. And then there is a maximum flow rate. When you cross that value, the level of service changes. Got it? Okay, so A has a range of flow rate. If you are in this range, your level of service is A. But there is this maximum value. If you cross the maximum value, you will go from A to something else. But this maximum value is known as service flow rate. Okay. Then you have for A and B and C and D and E. Now E means capacity condition, right? So the maximum of uh, E, maximum service flow rate of E, is capacity. And after E, then you have the Q or that. Okay. Now, if you have flow rate, you want volume. You have service flow rate. All these are flow rates. You have service flow rates. Now, you want volume. I will use peak hour factor. Flow rate multiplied by peak hour factor becomes volume. Service flow rate multiplied by peak hour factor becomes service 
okay so each level of surface has a maximum flow rate surface flow rate you can convert it to volume by multiplying by p cos and you can do the other way around as well you have volume you want flow rate you will do what you have volume you want flow rate you will do what divide okay for volume you want divide for flow rate you divide okay just a last couple of slides freeway i already explained it means uninterrupted no interruptions no intersections at all okay and uh, in this topic in these slides we will talk about freeways and multi lane highways together because their procedure is same okay so we will talk about them together two lane highways we will talk in the next slide <coughs> so freeways no no intersections so how do you enter the freeway and exit the freeway you have to use <coughs> yes you have to use ramps so all entries and exits from the freeways are through ramps ramps are not considered intersections ramps are not intersections we call them interchanges interchanges are allowed on uninterrupted interchanges are allowed intersections not allowed so the freeways only have ramps okay and uh, yeah freeways are defined by number of lanes how many lanes they have okay so you can have a uh, four lane freeway six lane freeway okay four lane means each lane how many directions oh sorry each direction how many lanes four lane two lane is that okay can i have two lane freeway can i have a two lane freeway no there is no two lane freeway okay then we have multi lane highways multi lane highways have interruptions but what is the condition these interruptions must be how much there was a the number right the distance between the interruptions should be how much yeah what between two miles two miles okay multi lane highways have interruptions they have intersections But the intersections are more than two miles from each other. Okay, so we are considering them under uninterrupted. Okay, so multi lane highways again they have more than two lanes. And another thing is they can be divided or undivided depending upon median. Okay, if a multi lane highway has a median, call them divided. Doesn't have a median, undivided. Okay, clear? And what about freeways? Freeways are divided or undivided? Huh? Divided. There is no undivided freeway. So freeways cannot be two lanes. Freeways cannot be undivided. Okay. Clear? Hmm. Any questions? 